Good afternoon and welcome to the Coronado Island Film Festival. And this is our first live stream ever. So it is real live TV. So if we <laughs> stumble over our words or things blow behind us, please forgive us. It'll just make it more exciting. Anyway, we are joined here today with celebrity chef Lauren Lawless and a flawless cuisine. And we are so honored to have here her with us on this wonderful occasion, our Veterans Day holiday. And here on Coronado, um, we just honor our veterans with our Veterans Day salute every year during the festival. Um, it's such a poignant holiday of remembrance for us and we take it very seriously. Um, but we know that families do get together. Um, and when they get together, there's usually food involved. And we love new recipes, we love food, we yes. love gathering around the table, and so we're excited to have you. But Boo, before we get started, I want our viewers to get to know uh, Lauren a little bit, because her story is amazing. But first, and I actually wrote this down because her accolades just keep racking up, she is the winner of Food Network's Supermarket Stakeout Season 2. She's been featured on the Travel Channel. She's on this coming season of Hell's Kitchen. Hell's Kitchen. 19, January 7th at Aries, so I'm super yeah, excited. Absolutely. Yep. I don't think I could survive Hell's yep. Kitchen. <laughs> I can barely survive my own kitchen. It's crazy, yeah. Yeah, so wonderful. And then you've Master Chef, um, and you just recently published a new cookbook. I did. It's called Flawless Cuisine, Inspiring the World One Plate at a Time. And it's an autobiography all about my life, uh, which I've shared with you. And mm -hmm. it's got new recipes, old recipes. Um, so it's an awesome book full of beautiful pictures and actually some of the recipes that are here today. So Fantastic. And, and as I said earlier, I really want our viewers right now that are tuning in to get to know a little bit about you. And the reason why is, you know, everyone has a backstory and, you know, that bring us to the success. Right now, your, your success is just keep building. But it wasn't, so. uh, yeah, <laughs> it wasn't always that easy. No. I mean, you have a remarkable story. Um, you're, you've just survived so much. So I just, you know, not to get super heavy into it, but I really would love for you to share a little bit about, you know, sort of your journey to, to here. Um, and your so, bathroom. I mean, it's, again, it's all in my cookbook, so you guys definitely need to check it out. It's on Amazon, Flawless Cuisine, Inspiring the World, One Plate at a Time. It's about my life. And I really wrote this book to inspire others to show people that we are, you know, we're human, we're real, you know, things happen that we can't control, um, but that shouldn't define us. Our, our past and our family and things that happen to us should not define our future and who we are. Mm -hmm. So we need to learn to overcome obstacles in life and to keep pushing through the hard times. Um, you know, I had a very tragic childhood. My mother shot and killed my father when I was 10 years old. I'm a survivor of domestic violence. I've, you know, been through a lot of abuse and trauma um, but I don't ever let that keep me down or hold me back from being successful. Um, I want to inspire the world one plate at a time through my food, sharing my story, my journey, and of course, inspiring my children. And I'm building this empire for my children so they can look up to their mom, so. Right, it's sort of removing the, the stigma from the childhood into this, into your own kids' lives. Correct. And, and don't get me wrong, I got, we, I have my own problems, <laughs> I have PTSD and stuff, but, you know, I'm, I'm a good crazy. But good resetting crazy. that button so that Correct. your children have a completely different yeah. experience. But so, My daughter's had a hard life, you know, already yeah. as it is. So, you yeah. know, I'm teaching her to be a strong, independent woman, to not let anybody Absolutely. get them down. And, you know, you just got to keep going. You got to roll with the punches, be strong. I have yep. very tough, tough skin. Um, and I think without honestly going through all that trauma in my life, I wouldn't be where I am today. Mm -hmm. It's made me a very hardworking, strong person. Yeah. Um, again, I wear my heart on my sleeve, but I don't take, I don't take it from anybody. Absolutely. I was going to say that word. <laughs> <laughs> I try not to say, say customer, but yeah. I don't take my, it from anybody. Live TV. Yes. But, but, and actually, because right now, I know that your grandmother, we were talking a little bit off camera before we got started and the role that your grandma has sort of been in my life, a yeah. stabling force in your life yeah. and also influencing sort of cooking she I mean, has. how does all this out of that all that turmoil how does cooking come into play i've always found myself around food and cooking since i was a child i was always in the kitchen where the action was cooking alongside my grandmother i really have not stopped cooking since she's taught me a lot of mm -hmm. the recipes that are in my book um you know just she's helped shape me into the woman i am and i always yeah. turn to food for comfort i always had it you know very hard and i felt like right. being in the kitchen getting my mind off things and cooking and being creative and making new recipes really, you know, it really helped me get through yeah. the, get through the hard times and the struggles. Right. So, um, yeah, I've, I've been cooking since I was a little girl, and um, 
I'm very thankful for her. She, you know, she took me in at a young age. Yeah. Um, when I was a kid, I had to live with my grandmother. So, um, with that being yeah. said, you know, well, I love you, and Grandma. I, <laughs> yeah, and I know you were talking to her right before we I was, started I too, with, <laughs> and talking about your grandfather, who is in fact a, an army veteran. He was. Yeah, he's and he's passed, but yes, he was in the army, and they were over in Germany for years, and you know, it was back in the day. So. Yeah. Things weren't easy back then. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. But it's just a remarkable how just the influence of someone in your life has shaped that trajectory into really your career. It really was, and your it was saving. never always like that. Yeah, I never, yeah. you know, I didn't know what I wanted to be for years. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, I, I sold love. I sold technology. I sold dogs, <laughs> cars. You name it. I have sold it. I could sell a used tissue to anybody. Um, but uh, you well, know, you don't have to sell us. <laughs> if, if you've been to Lauren's Instagram page. <laughs> You will instantly become a fan. Um, You're going to get hungry or hangry. One or the other. Hangry. People get hangry all the time. (laughs) Yes. No, this is wonderful. Well, tell us what you're going to be. We have three tapas, and these are kind of stemming from your new venture. Yes. You have a brand new food truck that you've launched that is a global tapas. It's hot pink with my face on it. You guys cannot miss it. It's called Flawless Cuisine Tapas, small plates from all around the world. So we offer global cuisine. Um, It's kind of fine dining on wheels. (laughs) It's not your average food truck, obviously. I am a celebrity chef, so I take my food, my craft. I'm not saying they don't, but very seriously. And I wanted to bring more of a fine dining experience to all of San Diegans to enjoy. Yeah, so. well, and again, as your profile raises, so does the, uh, you know, the, the yeah. pressure to <laughs> exactly. keep Have creating things food. and yes. coming up. But I think it, it, it fits your personality and your style. And I think it, you know, has stayed true to who you are as a chef, which is really important. Yeah. Um, well, in any in industry, but especially And it's veteran today, so we had to do something yes. that's more of yeah. American- you know, feel yeah. good, comfort food. Do um, a little bit of a twist. So there's three things that you're going to be making. And then what, so what's our first one that you're going to be making? So Is I'm going to show you guys. These are actually on my food truck again. You guys can come check us out. We're typically in North mm-hmm. Park, Monday through Friday. Uh, we change our locations, but we post daily where we're at. You can check it out on my Instagram at chef mm-hmm. underscore lawless. We have our Flawless Cuisine food truck. Um, and then, of course, my website, flawlesscuisine.com. You guys can find out where we're at. Perfect. But today, this is actually on our truck. I love it. It's super easy, mm-hmm. but it's kind of complicated also. Yeah. Um, it's shrimp corn dogs. Okay. So it's literally a shrimp Perfect. dipped in corn batter or cornmeal. Um, and it's got a chipotle aioli, and it's drizzled with honey. It's amazing. It tastes like cornbread, but it's got the shrimp in there. So Perfect. You guys are going to love it. Perfect. It's bite-sized, easy-to-go food. This will be a good time to interject. If you are watching us right now and you haven't been to the Coronado Island website, you can go on there and the recipes are there. So you can download it. You'll find uh, in our program guide the listing for this live stream. You'll find the recipe. So you can download them if you don't have time to make Easy it Easy step by step. Yeah, you can certainly make them later. So we'll have this up. But I'm going to actually let you get started. Yeah, I know that people are waiting to get into this whole demo. And then we'll do crab cakes next. Oh, yes. Yep. We have amazing crab cakes. These are in my cookbook, guys. These are my um, jumbo lump Cali crab cakes. They're amazing. I definitely think I make the best crab cakes around. (laughs) I have perfected these bad boys. You guys are going to love them. And then we have our fig and gorgonzola sliders with um, arugula. They're amazing little sliders, and they're actually on the food truck as well. Well, this looks fantastic. So, yeah, let's get you started. Let's go. And I'm sure we're all going to be hovering over you waiting to... Taste this <laughs> afterwards. For sure. But yes, thank you so much. Thank you. It's such an honor to have you with yeah. us today. And make sure you guys tune yep. in January 7th. Hell's Kitchen yeah. season 19 is going to air, and I'll be competing. So it's going to get hot in the kitchen, and <laughs> who knows what's going to happen. Absolutely. All right, let's go. I'm going to move out of the shot. All right, I'm going to go ahead and get my stove going here so we can get our oil heated up. First, we're going to make our corn dogs, our shrimp corn dogs. Now, Again, these are super simple, but they're also a little more complicated. The first thing you want to do is make your batter for the corn dog. So what I have here is cornmeal, flour, buttermilk, egg. We, we have, have corn, corn, um, corn <laughs> sorry, pa- <what? laughs> baking powder. See, this is live TV. Brain fart. Haven't had my coffee this morning. Sugar and salt. So very simple. You get it all into a, uh, a little bowl right here with a whisk. And you can use, oh, sorry, try first. You can use uh, buttermilk or you can use milk. It's up to you. I like buttermilk. I feel like it makes a fluffier batter. And you definitely have to have um, the salt, the sugar, just to make sure you get that beautiful batter. All right, and then we're going to mix that up. So, again, dry ingredients before wet. And this is live TV, guys. Yes. We got our buttermilk here and then one egg. We're gonna get that in here. 
no shells. And a little trick that I like, uh, if you guys crack the egg on a flat surface, it'll avoid you getting shells in your actual batter. So you're gonna get that mixed up. If you need to add a little bit more um, milk or buttermilk, you can definitely do that if you feel like it's too thick. But this is a good consistency. You can add a little bit of honey to it if you guys like to, but we add honey at the end. So that's a beautiful cornmeal batter for your corn dogs. So next step, while my oil is heating, I wanna show you guys how to put these on a stick. So you can use any type of stick you want. You can use a long bamboo skewer. You can use one of these small ones that I have. And it's very simple. Make sure you guys clean your shrimp. Biggest step, people forget. Make sure you peel your shrimp, devein it, take the tails off. Nobody wants that poop shoot in there. Doesn't taste good. And then you're just gonna very gently push your shrimp onto your skewer, just like that. I'm gonna do this for three shrimp. And I like to season the shrimp as well. Again, my, a big thing for me is always seasoning as you go. You wanna season every step of the way. And again, these are very delicate, so you wanna do it very slow. Just gently pushing that through. Make sure you have no shell. And there's a second one, and then we're gonna work on the third. And this is a great, appetizer if you have a party. Um, it's great for the kids. My kids love it. Great way to introduce, introduce them to some seafood. I keep breaking these. You guys got to be very gentle again. Get one more on here and then we're going to go ahead and get these in the deep fryer. So just gently push that through. Perfect. All right. And then we're going to season them with a little bit of Old Bay here. We're gonna dip them into our batter, and then we're gonna get them into the hot oil. I'm gonna do a little tester real quick and see how hot my oil is. I don't wanna have too hot of oil. If your oil is too hot, you're not gonna cook that shrimp. The batter's gonna be raw. If it's too hot, you're gonna burn the outside. It's not gonna be good. So that's a good little bubble there going on. So just dunk your little shrimps into that batter. Make sure you coat all sides and just get it right into your pan here. Nice hot pan. And be careful not to splash yourself. Again, these are a little delicate, so just take your time with these. Don't be scared. You might go through a few to get a good one. All right, and then we're gonna get it into our pan, our pot right there. And then while these cook, I'm gonna show you guys how to make a really quick dipping sauce. It's our chipotle aioli. If you guys don't like spicy, you don't have to use so much. You can take, take some, some of it out. out. You, you can, can also, also use like a honey mustard if you want. You know, you could do a barbecue sauce, whatever you guys prefer. I'm gonna turn up my heat a little bit. That's perfect. All right. I'm gonna switch out my gloves here. And then we're gonna go ahead and work on this sauce real quick, guys. All right. I have my beautiful assistant Brittany here helping me as we go, because we're on live TV. And then again, for this chipotle aioli, you guys, it's very simple. You can add ingredients that you like. If you wanna add lime to it, you can. If you wanna add some sour cream, you can. Yogurt, it's completely up to you. It's very simple, so it's gonna be some mayonnaise. And a little bit of the Old Bay. Again, using a lot of the same ingredients. I need my tongs, please. They're in the kitchen, I believe. She's gonna go grab my tongs. We don't wanna burn these bad boys. You guys wanna watch these and flip these because sometimes they get a little lopsided. And we're gonna get a little bit of lemon juice in here. Give it a nice acid, some brightness. So just a little cheek of that lemon. Thank you. And my corn dogs are almost ready. And then we have a can of Chipotle and adobo. Just wanna chop up a little bit of this. Again, it's spicy, so you can use as little or as much as you prefer. I like spicy. It doesn't bother me, so chop it up very fine. We don't want big chunks of Chipotle in there. Get it into your mayo. And you can do this in a food processor if you like, or you can just do it in a big bowl. And it's gonna go great with our corn dogs. Those look beautiful. You wanna pull those off for me? Again, I'm gonna put a little bit more Chipotle in here. I like a little bit more heat. And there you have it, you guys. That was super simple. 
I literally made that in under five minutes. You can do this at home. We've got our beautiful corn dogs here. And what I like to do with my corn dogs, I like to top them with some honey. It gives it a nice sweetness. So here are our beautiful corn dogs. I'm gonna show you guys how to plate these. Look at those. We're gonna season them with honey and some Old Bay. Absolutely gorgeous. Your kids are gonna love them. You guys are gonna love them. It's a great weekday or weekend recipe. Your chipotle and a little bit of that Old Bay. Gives a little bit of kick. And there you have it. We got our shrimp corn dogs, guys. Super simple, again, under five minutes. And we're gonna go ahead and move on to the next. You guys can, again, find this recipe on my website, flosscuisine.com. You can find it on my Instagram. And of course, it's on our food truck. So make sure you guys come by and check it out. All right. Now we're gonna work on, I need my pan, please. We're gonna work on our next recipe, guys. Got it? Pan? All right, so we're gonna do our Cali crab cakes. Now, the, again, these are in my cookbook. I love these. I definitely feel like I make the best crab cakes in town. You guys are gonna have to come try them out for yourself. We use jumbo lump crab or lump crab, whatever you prefer. Um, then we also have a bunch of different seasonings here. Pretty much everything but the kitchen sink goes into this recipe. So we've got our beautiful crab, lump crab. Put that into a bowl. We've got some Old Bay again. Some garlic powder. And I like to season these well. You wanna be able to eat these on their own without any you know, dipping sauces, but we do do a dipping sauce with it. We've got some melted butter here. Definitely want all that butter in there. We've got celery here. We've got some coarse mustard, Dijon, or grain mustard. Parsley. Some red onion. And some red bell pepper. Now you can use um, tri-color if you wanna use three different colors, make it more you know, peeling, you can definitely do that. You can use as much or as little as you like. Again, you guys have the recipe online. And then we're gonna use some panko. I like to not use so much breading in this. I like to see how the consistency is as I go. And then we're gonna get our egg in here. And the last but not least, we need lemon zest and lemon juice. And you wanna zest your lemon first before you juice it, otherwise it's gonna be pretty hard to do. And you just wanna use just that yellow part. You don't wanna use the white. It's gonna get a little bitter. And I love acid, I love lemon, so I'm gonna put a lot of here. And I'm also gonna use my lemon juice. My pan's getting nice and hot here. Medium high heat. Make sure you guys don't get any seeds. Make sure you use your hand to catch those seeds. Nobody wants to bite into a, a lemon seed. All right, and then the last thing, a little bit of mayo. And then we're gonna give it a mix with our hand gently. You guys don't wanna Ruin the consistency of that beautiful lump crab meat. And then again, we'll just look at the consistency of these. I'm gonna turn my heat down a little bit. And these only take a few minutes to cook on the stove top. If you want, you can bake these also, but I would prefer to pan sear them. All right, this needs more panko. And look how beautiful that is. Again, we don't use a lot of breading in here. It's mostly crab meat. Very flavorful. I love the mustard in this. We're gonna get some oil into our pan here. Can I get some butter please also? And then we're gonna go ahead and shape our patties into little round balls and I kind of like to have a little height on it. It just looks much prettier. And then we're gonna get these bad boys into a nice hot pan. I typically serve them in two. Again, we're gonna top it with that beautiful chipotle aioli that we used earlier. If you guys don't like it, you can do a remoulade. I do a roasted red bell pepper. That's a tongue twister. 
roasted red bell pepper remoulade. It's actually also in my cookbook and it goes great with crab cakes. And just gently push them down, not too much. And we're gonna cook those for a few minutes on each side until they're golden brown. And you can just hear them sizzling away. I'm gonna turn up my heat a little bit. Make sure the wind doesn't blow those, <laughs> blow the heat out. Alrighty. Clean up my station a little bit. And what I also like to do, I like to add a little bit of butter once I'm cooking these to kind of base them in that, that beautiful butter. I need a, no, it's got this good. And again, just be gentle with these. They can fall apart a little bit. So you just want to push them together, let them cook through. All right, we're going to go ahead and check these. Carefully flip it over. Look at that beautiful golden crust. These are smelling amazing, guys. I wish you could smell it. I wish we had smell-o-vision. Haven't got there yet. Smells incredible. Best crab cakes in town. Make sure you guys come check them out on the food truck, Flawless Cuisine. Or you can get it in my cookbook. Look at those. Beautiful, smell amazing. Jumbo lump. And you can taste all that beautiful lemon zest. Got that citrus in there. Look at those, guys. Those are almost done. We're gonna get them onto our board here, and I'm gonna top them with some micros and some edible flowers. Now, you don't have to do that, but oh, I'm girly girl. I like that, you know, that, that prettiness. Gotta add that little kick. And now I'm gonna go ahead and get my butter in the pan, if I can get it out. And at the end, you wanna add your butter towards the end and just kinda coat those beautiful crab cakes in that butter. Look at that. Smells incredible. They look amazing. And what I also like to do is top these with some pickled onions. You can top it with arugula. You could serve it with a salad. These are great for dinner. We do little sliders like these on the truck as well. They're amazing. All right, guys, the crab cakes look done. Again, they got that beautiful butter, golden brown. Look at all the beautiful colors from the peppers, the celery, the red, uh, red onion, the parsley. Smell amazing. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull these off carefully again. And there you have it, guys. These are my Jumbo Lump Cali Crab Cakes. Absolutely amazing, delicious. We're gonna to top it with our Chipotle aioli. Sometimes it gets stuck in here. See, this is what happens when you're on live TV. Our chipotle aioli goes on top. Beautiful. Can I, and then I'm gonna go ahead and serve this with a little bit of lemon, guys. Just a lemon cheek. And then we're gonna top it with our beautiful micros here. Trust me, your friends and family will love this recipe. Doesn't get much better. Fresh lump crab, We've got that spicy aioli, and then some pretty little micros on top. And there you guys have it. We've got our jumbo lump Cali crab cake. Super simple, I made that again in under five minutes. Five minutes or so, yeah. Beautiful, there you have it. All right, we're gonna move on to the next. We're gonna get started on our sliders. So we're gonna do a fig and gorgonzola slider. I love these sliders. Um, I'm waiting for my hot cast iron here. You guys wanna do it in a cast iron if you have one. It's a great way to cook meat. You're gonna get that nice crust on it. And again, crust means flavor, right? Thank you, my beautiful Sue. Isn't Brittany a good guy, see? What would I do without her? <laughs> All right. So a nice hot pan, high heat. This is a very, again, simple, easy recipe you guys can make at home. Don't overcomplicate it. Uh, my favorite part about this burger is the fig jam. You can get fig jam, you know, every store pretty much has it. I've seen it at Vaughn's, they have it at Trader Joe's. It's delicious, it goes great with that salty cheese. You're gonna love it. So let me get another glove on real quick. 
I also like to stuff these patties um, with the cheese instead of coating it with or topping with the cheese. It actually holds together better and you don't have to worry about the cheese going everywhere. I love that juicy cheese inside. When you bite into it, it just melts out everywhere. So today we're gonna stuff it. And I actually made a stuffed burger like this on Food Network Supermarket Steakout. I just won, guys. Um, and I had a triple decker uh, patty melt and I actually stuffed it with cheese. You guys can watch that episode. It was killer. So you take your burger. Again, this is a slider. We don't want it too big. And then you're gonna put your finger in the middle and you're gonna take that gorgonzola. If you don't like gorgonzola, you can use blue cheese. You could use Havarti, you could use brie cheese would be great with this. Um, so just, you know, make it your own. Switch out ingredients as you go. So you stuff the cheese in the middle. I'm gonna get some oil into your pan. Nice hot, hot pan. And then we're gonna get this with some salt and pepper. If you wanna add a little garlic powder, you can, up to you. Super simple recipe, guys. You can put this on the grill too if you wanna grill it. Go for it, but I like that cast iron. Make sure it's smoking hot when you get your meat in. I see the smoke now, and that's gonna get that nice crust, that nice coat of the meat. And that's what you wanna hear, that nice sizzle. Just press it down just a little bit, and then you're just gonna leave it, let it cook. I'm also gonna get my buns in here. I have some beautiful brioche buns. You can butter them and put them in here. You can just use the fat from the meat if you wanna put them in here. I love the brioche bun. And then we also have some beautiful arugula, gives it that pepperiness. And we're just gonna cook this probably about, I would say, three minutes per side or so. We're gonna watch it. This recipe is on my website, guys, flawlesscuisine.com. It's a great little burger, a little more upscale, not your average slider. You could add caramelized onions to this. You could add some pear to it, whatever you prefer. It's a great burger. All right, so my bun is getting nice and caramelized. As you can see, my pan is smoking hot. And I like my meat medium rare, so we're gonna cook it about three minutes or so per side. Just check it. My buns are nice and cooked. And I pretty much made this whole meal, guys, in under 20 minutes. So you can make this for your friends and family. They will love it. Weekend's coming up, so we're gonna go ahead and flip this burger. Beautiful. All right, I'm gonna change out my gloves again, and then we're gonna plate this guy, and then we're gonna eat it. Because I like to eat, and it smells amazing in here, so. If I can get the glove on my sweaty hand. I feel like a doctor. <laughs> Ready for your exam? Alrighty. So my burger is smelling amazing, looks great. It's needed probably another two minutes or so. I can see the outside is still pink. The top is nice and crusty, but it's still a little under. This is probably the longest recipe because you wanna make sure your meat is cooked. I'm gonna flip it again, check on it. And you can see the cheese coming through. It's getting nice and melty. And just watch it. Once it's firm to touch, you'll know if it's cooked. If it's too soft, the meat's not cooked through. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this started. I'm gonna take my buns right here. And you wanna take the top of your bun that you've already got nice and toasty. You're gonna take that beautiful fig spread or fig jam. They also call it fig butter. Get this on to your beautiful brioche bun. Again, little as much as you like. I like a lot. I'm not gonna lie. Like that much right there. 
And then by the time I'm done with this, our meat should be ready to come off, guys. You could do a caramelized onion jam. They have bacon jam, jalapeno jam. But I love the fig jam. I love the little seeds in it. I love the taste of the sweet with the gorgonzola cheese. We're gonna flip this one more time and then we're gonna pull it off. Beautiful caramelization. Nice crust on the outside. We're gonna put a little bit of our arugula here onto our bun. Try not to make a mess like me. And then we're gonna take our patty. This is a big one, guys. And we're gonna get it on here, right on our bun here. Again, if you want it medium rare, rare, it's up to you how you like it. There you have our slider, guys. Beautiful slider, gorgonzola, fig jam, arugula, delicious. And I'm gonna go ahead and get, try one of these corn dogs actually, cause they look amazing. But again, you guys can get all these recipes, flawlesscuisine.com. You can come on, check out the food truck, Flawless Cuisine food truck. We're in North Park, Monday through Friday. Follow us on our Instagram at Flawless Cuisine food truck. And we also have our Facebook. So make sure you guys come by and check us out and um, have a blessed day again. Thank you guys so much for your service. Veterans Day, what can I say? You're my heroes, and we appreciate you serving our country. Cheers, guys. Mmm, so good.